Good afternoon. Thank you. And welcome to the 2017 State of the University Address. My name is Todd Dyke, and it's really my great pleasure to serve as the Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost. Whether you are joining us via web stream from one of our stellar regional campuses or from your classroom across Rissman Plaza, it is an honor to have you share in the celebration of this important occasion. Each fall, our president calls us together to reflect on our achievements during the past academic year and to share her vision of the promise and potential ahead. This is an appropriate day to look ahead because throughout history, October 17th has marked the start of new visions and innovations that change the world. On this day in 1888, Thomas Edison filed the first patent for the optical phono phonograph, the world's first movie projector. In 1907, the Italian inventor Marconi launched the first commercial transatlantic wireless service. For those of you who are, who are younger, think of it as Snapchat of the 20th century. <laughs> And on this day in 1933, Albert Einstein arrived in the United States as a refugee from Europe. And so today, we gather as a Kent State community to think about our future. To lead that conversation, we will hear from our bold and visionary president, Beverly Warren. Bev brings tireless energy and strategic vision to every challenge and opportunity. She calls upon us each to aim higher, reach further, and have a greater impact in everything we do. <laughs> to introduce our president, it is now my honor to welcome to the podium a distinguished member of our Kent State family. Please join me in welcoming the director of our Student Multicultural Center, Dr. Talia Drummer. Good afternoon. I think we can do a little bit better than that. Good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Dr. Talia Renee Drummer, and I am the director for the Student Multicultural Center. I am blessed to have a position where I have the opportunity to work with an amazing staff with Ashley Williams and Mike Daniels, where we are able to advocate for and encourage underrepresented students through various initiatives that provide cultural affirmation, promotion of diversity, create a sense of belonging, and be a home away from home for many of our students here at Kent State. We have been able to be a powerful voice and have had many successes because of the support, dedication, and encouragement of our university president, Dr. Beverly Warren. Now, unless you have been under a rock somewhere, you should know that our university's priority is students first. This is not just evident in President Warren's speeches, but also in her movements around campus, her visible presence, and her beliefs and methodologies that all students on all of our campuses here at Kent are indeed our top priority. Dr. Warren has the unique ability to show students, faculty, and staff where her heart truly lies, and I am very thankful to have been able to bear witness to it on countless occasions. Now, Dr. Warren, I know you're backstage, so hopefully you can hear me. I had the pleasure to run into you on Tuesday, July 1st, 2014, her first day here as the university president, which is also the same day I successfully defended my dissertation. I like to give her a little credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> that following August, I was honored to be a part of the first group of graduates who will have Dr. Warren as our commencement speaker. And now, coming full circle, I stand here with the distinct privilege to introduce to you at the today's State of the University Address, our University President of Kent State University, Dr. Beverly Warren. Thank you, everyone. But most of all, thank you, Talia. 
I said in my remarks before I even heard what you said, that we are so proud you're a graduate of our doctoral program in higher education. And more importantly, we're so proud you're the director of our Student Multicultural Center. I see evidence of your work each and every day. You elevate our students to see their best selves. You have really worked to help not only shape voices, but to refine those voices and have those voices heard across not only our campus, but throughout wherever our students go. You're a great part of that. So thank you so much. You know, and thank you too to everyone here in the Kiva and viewing from a regional campus we welcome you here today. It's so exciting to have so many people in the room ready to think about the launch of another academic year. And we again come together to celebrate our individual and collective achievements. There's no better day than a day that I can celebrate what you do. And perhaps even more importantly, to really consider our future, to frame a shared vision for the university we aspire to become. Today, we are going to try to answer some very important questions. Why are we here together at this moment in history? And why do we persist? And how can we best contribute to the greater good? We are one of the largest university systems in the nation and one of the closest families in the world. But in these challenging times, it's not merely enough for a university to be big. Kent State is called to be different, unique, inspiring. That requires us to take a journey together, a journey of purpose. So I'm here today to share some ideas about that journey. There are roads before us that can take Kent State to new levels of innovation and excellence. And I'm here to ask you to join me and to lock arms together in the journey toward what Kent State University can be for us and for the world. We face an exciting future and we lay that foundation today. Let us start by celebrating the present, the qualities and achievements that define Kent State University right now. And I want to thank every Kent State faculty member, staff member, student, and alumni for the great contributions that you make to our university. You demonstrate every day the genuine sense of caring that I've come to know as Kent State nice. But you know what? We're more than nice. We are truly exceptional. It is inspiring to reflect upon the many individual and collective achievements that have highlighted our university on a national stage, and I want to share those with you now. And while I know you'll want to cheer every single exemplar of excellence, I ask that you hold your applause, and we can give a big booming round of applause and celebration at the end of the accolades. I'd like to start with our faculty. Distinguished Professor of Human Evolutionary Studies, Owen Lovejoy, was awarded the Kent State University President's Medal, the highest honor conferred by this university. Human Development and Family Studies Professor Greg Smith received a more than $3 million five-year NIH award for his research on social intelligence training of custodial grandmothers and their adolescent grandchildren. Associate Professor of Biological Sciences, Gemma Casadesu Smith, received a $1.8 million NIH R01 award from the National Institute on Aging for her research on the effect of hormonal changes in aging women and the increased risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. Gemma, please hurry. <laughs> Professor of Social and Behavioral Sciences, Eric Jefferis received a $460,000 project grant from the U.S. Department of Justice for his Safer Communities Initiative. Associate Professor of History Elizabeth Smith Pryor was one of only two scholars to receive the Senior Fellow Award funded by the Ford Foundation. 
Kent State Stark, Associate Professor of Biological Sciences, Matthew Leonard's research will be featured in an upcoming episode of the PBS series, Nature, and has been published in one of the world's top science journals, Proceedings of the Royal Society. Professor of Chemistry and Biochemistry, Mitek Jaranik, was awarded the Marie Sklodowska Curie Medal for the Polish Society's scientific achievements in the development of nanomaterials. Professor and Knight Chair in Scholastic Journalism, Mark Goodman, was named Journalism Educator of the Year by the Association for Education in Journalism and Mass Communication. Assistant Professor of Art, Mawish Chisti, and Professor Emeritus, Paul O'Keefe, were both awarded prestigious Guggenheim Fellowships this past year. And our students are also contributing to a distinctive Kent State through national recognition. The Society of Professional Journalists recognized the staff of the Burr Magazine, Kent State's first student-produced magazine, with a National Mark of Excellence Award in the category of Best Student Magazine. Student athlete Danielle Thomas Dodd captured the 2017 NCAA Division I Women's Shot Put National Championship. Danielle is the first female national champion in the history of Kent State, a nine-time All-American, and the eighth Golden Flash to compete in the Olympics. Natalie Moses, a student from our School of Communication Studies, earned the National Award of Excellence from the National Association of Broadcasters for her full-length movie titled 6970 on the May 4th shootings at Kent State. Points of pride for our Kent State Athletics program include 14 All-Americans and seven academic All-America selections. These honors recognize the nation's most outstanding student athletes. The collective achievements of the Kent State community fuel our momentum and national distinction. This year, Kent State climbed an impressive 12 spots in the best national universities ranking by US News and World Report. And once again, we earned a place among the top 100 public universities in the US, 4,700 universities, no less, top 100 for Kent State. Our campus was ranked 11 in a list of the safest colleges in America, and we are number one in Ohio. Kent State continues to receive national recognition for inclusive excellence. For the fifth consecutive year, we earned the Higher Education Excellence in Diversity Award from Insight into Diversity. The university also received the Diversity Champion Award for 2016 and was recognized as a national model for workplace inclusion by the Society for Diversity. Our Academic Success Center in University College received the Frank L. Christ Outstanding Learning Center Award from the National College Learning Center Association. The Wick Poetry Center, led by Director David Hassler, received the nation's largest grant for poetry in support of the traveling stanzas Writing Across Borders initiative. Our May 4th site achieved designation as a national historic landmark. We made significant strides toward our goal of doubling research funding. Extramural funding rose 31% with a 38% increase in research awards. And philanthropic support increased by 31% with a record-setting $38.9 million in gifts and new commitments. For the first time, we secured nine gifts of $1 million or more and nearly 20,000 alumni and friends stepped up to support our university. I'm counting on that to be 40,000 of our alums and friends. Those of you out there, you and your friends, we need you. These remarkable achievements are worthy of our celebration and I would like for us to say congratulations to all for an outstanding 2016-17 year. Accomplishments like these don't just happen. 
They are products of hard work, of intention, and of building on a long tradition of excellence. So many in our community have been leaders in their disciplines and have helped to transform higher education. Our faculty and staff are intensely focused on a unique blend of teaching and learning, enhanced by cutting edge research and scholarship. The result is a learning environment not seen in many major research universities. Here, each of us has the opportunity to find our individual purpose and passion and engage in work that makes for a purposeful life. Yet I challenge us today to think about purpose from a second perspective. Higher education is facing increasing headwinds. The trends are evident. While research funding and donor support were both up 30% this year, funding from state appropriations continues to decline. And although the Kent State class of 2021 is one of the largest and is the most academically qualified ever, for the first time in a decade, our overall enrollment has declined. A large portion of that decline can be attributed to fewer international students choosing to study at Kent State or at other universities in the US. This trend makes it imperative to hold firm in our belief that we must be that welcoming university for all students. Our enrollment challenges, the challenge we face in higher education, have had a negative impact on our budget and have placed at risk our commitment to being a truly global university. So it does seem that sometimes those headwinds really do rattle the windows. Now, what does this all have to do with a perspective on purpose? Well, first, at this remarkable university, I have found that when we are challenged to our core, we respond, not only with resilience, but with an intensity of effort. Our intensity tells the world, Kent State will rise above. We will overcome, and we will move on with purpose. We are truly the architects of our own fate, and purpose is essential. Second, Kent State must make its case to the world more clearly and unmistakably than ever before. We must articulate our unique contributions to a society in such a compelling way that the Kent State story sets us apart. We must demonstrate our collective impact, indeed our collective purpose. We must move into the future with a shared passion that demonstrates the determination of a university with eight distinct campuses. We must be exemplars of that university whose collective vision is to innovate for the good of our communities and our society. Indeed, I believe the key to demonstrating collective purpose is cultivating an innovation mindset. Across the length and breadth of this institution, all of us must embody and share a heightened commitment to innovation and the world must see us doing it. I announced at our Board of Trustees meeting in September that I would view this academic year as the year of innovation. And I feel like those will not be empty words. And this won't be the one and only such year. In fact, I think this is a start of an innovation era for us. This is where our future begins to define us. We've been together for a while now. And I think we're set to move to the next level. We are perfectly suited to be that unique university where everyone in every facet of our communities is an innovator, a designer, a boundary expander. There's a name for such boundary spanning innovators. They are termed T-shaped individuals. Picture the letter T. The vertical stroke represents a deep expertise in one area, but the horizontal stroke at the top means these individuals reach out beyond 
their primary knowledge areas and collaborate with others for the greater good. I think these are the qualities we must foster throughout our campuses. Our newly developed design innovation initiative will propel a culture of innovation across every campus and throughout every community we serve. Deans Mark Mastur and John Crawford Spinelli are actually helping to lead this initiative with so much of a groundswell of support. And I know we'll want to join in because when we act with collective purpose, we naturally seek and embrace connections beyond our disciplines and our departments. We must be that university that unleashes the power of multidisciplinary action and collaboration. That's across everything we do. Whatever department, whatever facet of our campus life and across every single campus, that's what we do. We must believe that our best discoveries occur when disciplines collide. When we succeed at that, we not only set ourselves apart, we will resolve some of the most pressing challenges we face as a world. We realize also our highest hopes for using the creative potential that truly abounds here at Kent State. And we want to use that potential to make this world a better place. We know the world is counting on us and others to join forces in this effort. So to deliver on a culture of innovation, we must first embrace our humanness. It starts with empathy. Whether designing a core curriculum, and I do have hope, or a new product line in fashion, or a new intergenerational housing complex, it's so vital to consider the needs of the end user, the student who will learn from the curricular innovation, the person who will wear the new fashion, or members of our communities who will live together across all stages of life, the end user, the most important thing we must keep in mind. You know, in my readings about how others are truly framing a culture of innovation, I found this really interesting description offered by Tim Brown, who is CEO of the influential uh, design firm called IDEO. He said, a prerequisite is an environment, social, but also spatial, in which people know they can experiment, take risk, and explore the full range of their faculties that means we must have courage to fail and we must support one another in that effort to explore our humanness. That environment is what we will expand and embrace here at Kent State. And what a head start we have. You know, we've been innovators and creators for a very long time. We're not the first, but I think we are the group that can join forces to lift us to even higher planes. And I'd like to share with you just some of the examples of that creative potential. An innovation that we announced last year is our new Brain Health Research Institute, which will now reside in that beautiful, of all buildings, Integrated Sciences Building. Now, some may question how we will be innovators in the crowded space of brain health research. I know you are aware there's a good deal of brain health research going on right here in Northeast Ohio, not to mention all of the centers across the country exploring this area of endeavor. But there are so many others out there. This is what we will do. We will make sure that this Kent State difference is because of research professors like Jim Acasodesu Smith. Our work in this field will truly stand apart. So there's a sense of purpose that comes in, in like the innate curiosity of wanting to know about something, right? That I think that all of old scientists have that innate curiosity to, oh, you know, how does that work? I study the cellular molecular mechanisms of aging, particularly the cellular molecular mechanisms of learning and memory and how 
that's related to Alzheimer's disease. I think that if we understand what creates uh, learning memory problems during aging, we are going to be closer to being able to prevent Alzheimer's disease from happening. I'm in the biomedical sciences, so I can have a direct impact in adding to the knowledge base to cure a disease. You know, at the same time, when you're working in an academic institution like Kent, you also realize that through your teaching and through your research and through the experience the students have in your lab, you can have a humongous impact in their lives and their future. And I think ultimately, you know, being a professor, I think that that is my purpose. You know, not only creating, you know, providing knowledge or adding to the knowledge that we have, but more importantly, getting kids excited. So any student that comes into the lab, I usually say yes. So this high school student emailed me and said, I'm really excited about your work. Would you have any space available for the summer? I'm like, sure. So he came over and he, you know, he had a project to learn about the lab. He learned about how labs work. Most students, they can get a biology degree, but from getting a biology degree to actually seeing how a lab works is completely different. So he really loved the experience. He saw research in a completely different perspective and gave me a book with his sweet letter and that is what makes me want to be who I am. My name is Gemma Casadesis Smith and my purpose is to affect change through teaching and discovery. You know, change through teaching and discovery and without boundaries. Medical schools will continue to fight and conquer diseases of the brain. Kent State will work to enhance healing action, not only through medical sciences, but also through the engagement of the whole brain. Through a unique blend of art and science, Kent State is developing psychological interventions that illuminate how we learn and how we confront stress. We are harnessing the power of poetry to heal the heart and the mind. We are embracing the beauty of the arts to touch the depths of our humanity and lift the human spirit. In this holistic approach to brain health, Kent State has the potential to help more people live lives that are enriched and filled with purpose. Our Brain Health Research Institute joins faculty and staff from literally every facet of our university and across multiple campuses. This is the type of multidisciplinary research that we are pursuing. That is collective purpose. That is Kent State. In addition, we will highlight the many initiatives that will advance our most promising academic programs. Our School of Fashion is a shining example with its belief, and now an academic requirement, that every student must have a study abroad study away experience to graduate from this stellar program, the third ranked fashion school in the country. Our renamed College of Aeronautics and Engineering will highlight our work in advancing a comprehensive aeronautics program that ranks among the top five in the country. Our translation studies program with support from a million dollar gift will now offer a master's degree online so that many more individuals may benefit from the talented faculty in this top-ranked program. And let me be clear, innovation is not confined to the Kent campus. Innovation is everywhere. Take, for example, our programs in enology and viticulture on our Ashtabula campus, the state's only wine degree programs. Our Ashtabula campus students are extending science to serve communities and to be leaders in the billion dollar grape and wine industry right here in Ohio. Stay tuned. We may see a new vineyard in Northeast Ohio with a vintage Kent State signature wine. I'm waiting on that one. <laughs> that is innovation in the public square. That too is collective purpose. And that is vintage Kent State. What happens when we get this right? When we, the Kent State family, act with collective purpose and the world takes notice? 
Kent State will prove its value to society, making the world a better place not only through our work in classrooms, laboratories, and studios, but also through our deep collaborative engagement with the communities we serve. That is the type of environment that CEO Tim Brown spoke of, social and spatial, where students, faculty, staff, and our community partners join forces to explore, create, and build a better future together. This is the future that one of our students, Amelia Sharon, imagined. Amelia, a sophomore student from Trumbull County, was troubled by the impact of the opioid epidemic on her community. And through collective action, Amelia found a way to enlighten understanding of this terrible addiction, not only in her own community, but in communities across the country. Here is her story. Everyone has a purpose, and it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter how much money you make from it. It doesn't matter how other people think about it. It matters about how you feel about your work. I started talking to my professors, and that's the key. If you no longer want to be lost, if you want to find a path, you have to talk about it. You have to communicate face to face with a professor, a friend, or even a complete stranger. There are complete strangers that I would walk up to and I would introduce myself to. And as soon as they heard what I had to say, they were like, oh my gosh, yeah, they were very engaging. The opioid crisis and addiction is very important to me because the town I grew up in is highly affected by it. And I think that's something a lot of people can say. We shouldn't be suffering from addiction. We shouldn't be going to rehabilitation centers. We shouldn't be going to NA meetings. We should be traveling. We should be having fun. We should be going to school, getting an education, working, seeing the world. Independent the Heroin Project is a play that follows two addicts undergoing recovery, one successful and one really struggling. We didn't think of how big it would get. We didn't think of how important it was actually going to be to everyone who viewed it. I'm just amazed as to the positive impact and effect that this has on, on everyone in the community. My name is Amelia Sharon, and my purpose is to give a voice to the voiceless and instill hope in society. And you know, as Amelia's play debuts across the country, her request is that the proceeds and donations from the performances go to local rehabilitation centers. Amelia is a shining example of the power of individual purpose to drive collective action. And she's a sophomore. <laughs> we can all do this. It can begin right here in our Kent State community. Imagine the future for a moment. Imagine Kent State as the centerpiece of a far-ranging and boundary-spanning center of design innovation. Let's not get excited about center. We can do this. It can be done. A center that embraces a curriculum for all and students who are owned by none. A center of design innovation curriculum would spark epic thinking across multiple disciplines and areas of expertise. It would be a gathering space for current and future entrepreneurs and innovators. People collaborating not only to design new products, but also to advance social change and spark enhanced creative expression. Imagine a grand challenge studio, an interdisciplinary mecca, Imagine a place where students, faculty, staff, and community members come together to explore multiple resolutions to some of the world's greatest challenges. Challenges like climate change, 
healthcare enhancement, educational transformation, and civil discourse that drives mutual understanding and social change. We can be at the center of prototypes and novel ideas that can make a real difference in real lives and real communities. This is the type of innovation that will position us as a top university for purposeful learning, a place where every day we engage in multidisciplinary work that betters our society, starting first right here in our home communities. We can get there. The journey has actually already begun. We now must quicken our pace. But we can't get there without each of us locking arms and embarking on a journey to unharness this innovative spirit within, breaking down those barriers, forgetting boundaries, and really pursuing what steps it will take to frame a distinctive and unique Kent State. So the first call to action is to unlock our creative potential, our transformative potential, our Kent State potential to make a meaningful difference in the communities we serve. We need to consider new programs and initiatives, new research and scholarship, new service and engagement that reach beyond the boundaries of our expertise and the corners of our campuses. As Tim Brown of IDEO says in his book, Change by Design, the tools of the design thinker, creating stories to share our ideas, joining forces with people from other disciplines are ways of deepening what we know and widening the impact of what we do. Joining together across boundaries and with collective purpose is the key to making a difference. This frames our path to a more meaningful life of purpose for everyone, for ourselves and for those we serve. The second request today is to expand our consideration of the concept of a center of design innovation. Launching such a transformative center will require us to think differently about academic credit and how it is applied to earning a degree. We have to all be in this. It's an all-in proposal. We will need your best thinking to develop core courses in design innovation and capstone courses around grand challenges. How does that fit in your curriculum in your areas of expertise? That dynamic environment of the Center of Design Innovation will aim to elevate the T-shaped individuals that I mentioned earlier. Individuals who are anchored in one discipline and have the capacity and openness to span across multiple disciplines and departments. Isn't that how the world works? So accomplishing the goal of developing more T-shaped individuals will require each of us to consider how we ourselves will embrace the T. We must join together collectively and creatively to, to really establish this distinctive culture and this unique environment that I know we can do. Embracing the T, that's our quickest path to achieving this new culture of innovation so critical to our future. The T is, in fact, the DNA of our collective purpose. And so I encourage each of us to consider how we can embrace a collective purpose that reaches beyond our comfort zone and moves us into a zone that acknowledges a new type of education and service, a commitment to collaborate and share our humanity without the confines of really pre-imposed boundaries that we can surpass. This is really the call to action. In this year and beyond, may we all unlock our potential, reach across boundaries, and break down the barriers that often divide us. So as I conclude, let me express again my true deep faith and confidence 
in this wonderful university that we describe as home. I truly congratulate each and every member of the Kent State family for your commitment and your belief in this caring university. May we move forward with a renewed sense of the opportunities we have to embrace and to highlight and to activate our collective purpose. May the headwinds of change inspire us to innovate and collaborate like designers, create connections that shape the future, and give the world new solutions to its most intractable problems. You know, when we talk about our university and our family to the world, we use the term undeniably Kent State. What makes us different, we always say, is our people. Our wonderful, glorious, quirky, always supportive people who make it possible to stake our claim on a brighter future. That statement of belief in ourselves has never been truer or more important than at this moment in time. May we all live purposeful and fulfilling lives, and may each and every one of us step boldly toward our individual and our collective purpose. And may we move on with purpose together. Thank you all very, very much for being here today.